Well, hello, sewing friends. <laughs> that was a short introduction today. I had a few um, few glitches, couldn't get the camera to uh, cooperate, but we are all good now. So it's so good to have everybody here for the tea and tutorials. Let's go sew with Joanne Banco show. And we've got another Saturday edition here. So I see a whole bunch of you are here ready and waiting to learn more. Let me go ahead and cut. cut I'll try to speak. Let me go ahead and turn a couple things off so that um, everything works a little bit better. So if you can hear me say hi, I see already. Hi, hi, hi. So I think we are good. Um, give me a yes and, or a thumbs up or a can do if you're hearing me okay, because I see lots of you here. I see Mary from uh, Rocky River here. Let's see. Where did I miss her? I got so many here already. Mary's here from Rocky River. Kathy's here from Northeast Ohio. Karen's here from California. Janice is here from, from North Carolina. Let's see. Patricia from San Antonio. Wow, everybody says sounds good. Very good. Great, 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 great. Got Louisiana in the house. I see my friend here from uh, Creative Apple Case. Hey, Don. Good to have you here today. Um, Don is sipping iced tea. I am sipping plain old ordinary black tea today. Nothing fancy. Kind of, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit plain Jane today. So <laughs> no offense to Jane. If we have a Jane here, we do have a Jane here. Sorry, Jane. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Can I take that back? I'm feeling a little just kind of laid back and, and casual today. How about you? So a little bit of plain tea, not a whole lot of jewelry, not a whole lot of makeup. Um, one of those easy Saturday type things. <laughs> hey, Janelle, good to have you here. And Angela from Texas and Bambi Lynn from Pennsylvania. Very good. Hey, Kathy. Uh, my friend Kathy is here. June's here. Wow. Lots and lots and lots of you here. Terry's here from um, Lafayette. Yay. Terry, haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> and Janice says, no plain, no plain uh, uh, average ordinary. I don't know about that, but... Um, some days you just kind of are in the mood to, you know, take it easy a little bit. How about you? What's everybody doing today on this Saturday? Let me know if you're sewing, if you're um, doing any other um, activities, or if you are doing other activities and you're sewing in your mind. <laughs> We're going to spend about an hour today and talk about some things that I think you're going to enjoy. Um, we've got, you know, lots and lots and lots of options with our sewing and embroidery machines today. That's for sure. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it just gets a little bit overwhelming and we get into projects that maybe we just want to do um, something a little bit simpler. So today we're going to talk um, a little bit um, kind of on the um, not necessarily simple side but we're going to talk about some things that I think are very uh, doable and very easy for you to accomplish. So I'd love to know in the chat if you are uh, interested in um, learning more about towels. I'm assuming you are because that's why you're here. And I'm going to start right off by saying that I'm pretty much today going to be talking about um, tea towels and kitten towels. Uh, I, I, you know, when I started getting, getting ready for this and working on it, I was like, oh my, I got a lot to show you just on, on kitchen towels. So we'll have to do another show on uh, terry towels and that type of thing. I will say that just recently, my friend Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery did a great, great show with um, showing how to embroider multiples. And she had a lot of tips for towels and so I'm going to link to that in the in the show notes when the show is over today. But um, I see a lot of you are getting some things done. Let's see, Janice, what's Janice doing today? Janice is embroidering cards. Good for you, Janice. That is always 
always, always, always a fun thing to do. Um, wow. 40 hour labor. I can't even imagine that. I've never, never had that experience, but I can't even imagine. And Tammy says, yes, she wants to learn more about towels. Helen says, yes. Um, let's see. Tammy is from Colorado too. And she's saying hello to Birdie. And Ann Philbeck's here. And you are um, always faithful, um, as are many of you. So it's really great to have, have so many of you here. Um, she is embroidering freestanding lace and long arming today. Oh, Dawn is grocery shopping. Wish She wishes she was sewing. And Crafting with Marilyn says, um, yeah, show Terry towels. Yeah, it's a whole subject in and of itself. And I've got um, quite a few samples already made that I will be able to put this together either in another live show or I may just uh, post it as a video. But uh, there are many ways to not only, you know, tackle the hooping, but also tame the texture. So we'll do we'll do a show on that. But for day, today, we are going to talk kitchen towels. And I think I'm going to surprise you with a few things. So let me um, get uh, just a couple things up here and then I will show you. I had just a few, just a few little, um, little glitches here today that kind of um, messed things up as far as my organization. But let me go ahead and um, share my screen and just show you uh, the um, former project that I have done, one of them, and that is the uh, uh, tea towel for uh, brother using a serger. So I'm going to kind of just scroll that a little bit. I want you to see the, the main picture there, first of all. Uh, let me know in the chat if you did actually see that particular project. It was in the spring, but I want to, first of all, just give you a little bit of, a, of an overview of some past projects that I will link to in the show notes. Um, it's always nice to have full instructions and be able to go back and look at those and get ideas and inspiration from it, hopefully. Now, I will tell you right off the bat that the um, ones that I'm going to be showing you have been used as a free design of the month for Brother. And if you're familiar with free design of the month, they, uh, for quite some time, Brother has offered a free design for you to download. It's available on the Stitching Social website, and it is only available for the month that it's featured. So once that project gets uploaded and it's up for a month and then uh, you're able to you know download it and view it, the project stays there, but the design goes away. So hopefully you've been collecting those. If you haven't, I will tell you that the same designs are available for purchase on iBroidery. But I'm going to let you in on just a little secret. Go ahead and it, when I um, uh, add all the links to the projects, go ahead and click on it. And you may see, you may see the, you know, the the the, the error that's going to give you a frown. And that is that the design isn't there anymore. But you also may see a few of them that kind of snuck in and are still hanging in the air there that you may be able to um, to download. So just take a look at that one and you'll see that I used a ruffle on the bottom. And what I did in this particular case, and this features the ruffling foot that, that you can get from a serger, a gathering foot. And the real distinct thing about a gathering foot for a serger is that it allows you to gather a piece of fabric while you're get, uh, it allows you to sew a piece of fabric while you're gathering another piece of fabric onto it. There's actually, um, there's the design. You can see teacups are readily available. So you could substitute another teacup or another, another design. I chose to do mine as a freestanding piece. So I embroidered it on stabilized cotton, but then I treated all the edges with fray check, trimmed around it, and then applied it as an applique. There you can see me ruffling there. And there are the pieces. And there's the foot. So take a look at that foot and you'll see it's got a uh, separation there so that one layer can go in and stay flat and the other layer goes below that plate and engages with the feed dogs. And when you have the settings properly set, you can actually then go ahead and gather with that. So it makes it pretty, pretty unique. Um, that's a real fun way to, to decorate uh, a towel. 
So I want to show you another one here. And this one is another one of my favorites. This was a red work design that was featured as a free design. So again, use your imagination. There's lots and lots of designs um, out there. I bet you have a few saved on your computer. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> so if you do, go ahead and look for something to substitute. But in this particular case, I'm going to flip down to the bottom there so you can see the finished towel. What I did is I chose to use just a simple strip of fabric and then decorative stitches in a matching thread color to create all of that coordination to really, um, you know, up that plain old white towel into something special. So there you can see a close up of those decorative stitches. And it's one of the easiest, easiest ways for you to use your decorative stitches. And I see um, uh, she li Augustine likes the, the, the purple towel. Teresa says she wants to make some for a furnished rental. Oh, that is a super idea. Yeah. And Donna says um, she has an old serger, um, so she can use a ruffling foot. And you can ruffle actually even without a, uh, a ruffling foot because your differential feed on your serger will allow you to do that. But when you do the, the, the gathering to another piece all in one step, it just makes it really, really quick. Well, thank you, Janice. I appreciate that. I try. <laughs> I try hard to make it to make it work. Um, but that one really was one of my favorites just because it's something simple, a design, a pre-purchased tea towel and uh, a strip of pretty fabric uh, and decorative stitches added to it. So you don't have to have anything fancy to create something fancy. <laughs> I'm going to show you one more real quick. This was another one of my favorites. And this one, uh, another um, free design, uh, lightweight. If you notice, so far, these last two have been a lightweight design, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that when I show you a few more towels. But uh, when you use towels uh, that are lighter in weight, you want to make sure that you've got, um, you know, that that set up so that you're not going to have a problem with the uh, towel uh, puckering. And you know what? I forgot. I got to do one thing over here real quick. So let me step over. All righty. Like I said, I got a few camera issues today. And if I don't um, put that into sleep mode, I won't have a camera to use later. So this one, though, uh, what I did is I chose to use the same kind of towel. And I'll actually be showing you that towel. This is a great tutorial for using the snowman marker. So how many of you out there have the snowman marker feature on your machine or the, um, the app that simulates it? Let me know if you have it, if you've used it. Uh, it's one of the best ways to get the ultimate in accuracy when you're embroidering. And the great feature of the snowman marker on the Brother Machines, of course, I'm a Brother Ambassador, so that's the, the route that I'm going on. But again, you're going to be able to do towels no matter what machine today when you see uh, how I the ideas that I'm going to give you for them. But with the snowman marker, you can actually hoop your fabric crooked and still embroider straight. Now, I will tell you just a little secret. If you have ever been frustrated by that snowman marker, I see Bobby says she has it, never used it. Um, uh, Karen needs to use it. Pamela's used it. Good for you. Good for you. And Bambi, I'm going to save your uh, question because I will be answering that. Janice wishes she had it. Um, Yep, the snowman marker is a great, great feature. Hey, Reen, good to have you here today. Reen says she loves the snowman technology. So I let me get back to just that little, little secret that I was going to tell you. If you're using a design that's going to take up most of the size of your hoop, meaning you don't have a lot of free space, um, you know, you've got, you're using a, a design that's close to five by seven in measurements and you're using a five by seven hoop, you are still going to need to have your snowman marker pretty close to the center because the, when it goes to look for it, it can't really move around too much if it doesn't have extra space. So if you're using a design that's filling the hoop, just make sure that you get that snowman marker pretty good in the center. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The machine can adjust for you, but you need to be 
you need to be pretty, pretty close on that. So this is a really good tutorial on using it. And you can see, I even like to show you what happens when you get that dreaded crying face. Um, Juanita says she has never learned to use it. Well, I hope, um, I hope you can find that and do it. And Kathleen, that's okay. You've got another option. And there are many, many options for getting perfect placement. I think I could do a, a marathon 24 hour show on how to achieve perfect placement. Um, if I had one machine of every brand out there to test and try, we'd have a, a really, really, uh, you know, a field day. Um, but what I also show you in this particular project is again, just giving you little tidbits of tips and techniques and things that you can explore later on for embellishing your, your kitchen towels. And that is bobbin work. Bobbin work is one of my all time favorite things to do. You really and truly can do this on any machine. Uh, I'm actually teaching a local class next Saturday with some friends that have been making my jean jacket collection. And we're going to be doing bobbin work on some of those embroidered jean jackets. But um, you, you really, like I said, you can do it on any machine. You just need a secondary bobbin case that gets switched out for your regular one. And then that secondary bobbin case, you have to have the freedom to adjust it. So you're not going to use it for anything else other than bobbin work. Um, and when you go back to regular sewing, you got to put your regular bobbin case back in, but it can be used if it's loosened and you do some uh, uh, adjustment with that, with that bobbin case. So it is a possibility. Um, maybe you on another brand, you've, you've got the option as well, but it enables you to do uh, decorative stitching with thicker threads that would never be able to go through the needle. So again, if you have any questions um, about that, let me know. But this is a really good tutorial. All I did in this case, again, keeping it simple, keeping it rather, you know, easy here. I used plain grosgrain ribbon, which is one of my favorite things to trim towels with. And you just go ahead and stitch your bobbin work on that. Now, remember when you're, when you're doing bobbin work, you're stitching upside down. So whatever you're stitching, uh, you're facing the wrong side of your fabric or the wrong side of your ribbon, but you get a nice, heavy, detailed effect with that. And then you add that again, color coordinate with the scheme and you've got a beautiful finished tea towel. So very simple, very easy. Just uh, edge stitch that on. And I like to use uh, an edge joining foot for that because then I can follow the blade along the edge of the ribbon and then move my needle to whatever space I need it to be for that precise, precise stitching. I think probably one of my favorite, favorite features on our modern machines today that we never had back in the old days with our mechanical machines is just the ability to move that needle exactly where I want it to go. And Don, I see your question. I'm going to go ahead and, and bring it up. So, um, yep, the laser light is one of those options on some of the brother machines that helps you perfectly um, line things up when you're doing something that, you know, you, you want to be perfect on the right edge and perfect on the left edge. But Don is asking, where do you purchase your towels? And that is the $6 million question. Um, I'm going to tell you um, that I don't really have any great resources for where to purchase because that's something that changes constantly. I'll give you a few recommendations though, as far as brand names. And today with our ability to do an internet search, you can search that brand name and then find out where you might like to purchase it from based on, you know, uh, availability, shipping cost, if you, you know, whatever, whatever online shopping merchant you like to follow. If you have some good brand names, I think you'll, um, you'll find some, some good options uh, for finding towels. So you'll, you'll, I'll answer that a little more clearly in, in just a minute. Um, and Kathleen, the tutorials are on the Brother Stitching Social site. So in the show notes, once the show ends and then it uploads to YouTube, it takes just a little bit of time. I'll be able to add uh, links for you. You just go to the show notes and click on more. And I will have links to all three of those 
towel so that you can just click on that and it'll take you right to the project. Okay. Yes. Creative Apple case. Thank you. That was actually one of my things on my list for uh, to tell you where to look for towels as a resource is all about blanks. So all about blanks dot com is um, what it's called. Let me go ahead and just type that in for you. Do that real quick. Uh, www dot all oops, let me try to spell all about b l a n k s dot com. Go ahead and let you see that. They have just so many, so many blanks. It is amazing. Um, just anything and everything you could possibly imagine. They are also very, very commonly found at some of the big shows. So if you go to uh, the, the, the shows, you can, uh, you can look for them. They're, they're at lots and lots and lots of shows. And they have uh, just so many things, just so, so, so many things. So I'm trying to get this to go across the bottom. Let's see. Okay, so hopefully you, you got that one. And let's see, I got another um, thing here that I want to bring up, and that's Teresa. She purchased towels from a restaurant supply store. So wonderful recommendation. Thank you, Teresa. Glad you're here. Um, watching today. You're going to get to see some of these towels in person because <laughs> you're in my local group. So um, you're going to be able to see some of these in person on, on, when that comes up. But that is a great, great resource. Um, so anybody else, if you've got some resources, please share them with me. I'm going to um, give you some of the, the, again, the towels that I like to use most often, um, a couple of the brand names, and I'm then also going to give you some what I consider off the wall, possibly slightly different, something that maybe you haven't thought of before, some options for making your own towel. So I can't wait to share that with you. And that is coming up next. So let me get this off the screen and let me get this one up here. So let's start first of all with typical towel sizes. Now, this is by no means um, anything that you have to follow in stone whatsoever. I'd love to hear in the chat if you've got um, favorite towel sizes. Uh, fingertip towels, I'm going to show a sample of a fingertip towel in a couple minutes here, but uh, that's, you know, been a popular size. A lot of times uh, you can find those at local discount stores. Um, Check the home goods stores, check your, you know, your big box discount stores. Uh, a lot of times you can find towels that are suitable there and, a, and the fingertip towels, um, those were all the rage for a long time. If you do a, an internet search for those, you will definitely, definitely find those. And Rhonda, thank you for chiming in. Um, she buys almost all of hers from All About Blanks and she makes some using linen. now. That's really interesting, Rhonda. Um, that is um, one particular fabric I have not used, although it would seem likely because I haven't found anything that fits all of my criteria. Um, maybe you got a good uh, good source for that. And hey, Don, we're glad you finally made it to a live show too. This is great. <laughs> hey, Peg, I hope you're okay. I haven't seen you for a while. Hope everything's okay with you. And yep, Ann says she got some beautiful tea towels on Amazon. So, um, you know, I don't have an Amazon store. I don't have an Amazon link. Um, I'm always all about recommending local as much as possible. So some of these supplies you will even find at your local quilt shops, at your local sewing machine dealer, but can't always find what we need there. And yes, um, you know, that it's a big world out there as far as internet retailers. So Again, I'll just give you some, some ideas and hopefully that will help. All right, Vicki, glad to have you here from Ozark, Missouri. Wonderful. Boy, I think Saturday might be the clue to getting um, some of you uh, here that normally can't come on, on other days. So that's terrific. Okay, so typical towel sizes. My largest towel that I have that is a typical, what I would call a ready-made towel, 
measured 20 inches wide by 28 inches long finished. And that was a Dunrovan towel. So Dunrovan, D-U-N-R-O-V-E-N, is a very, very popular name brand for towels. A lot of times you'll find your quilt shops will be carrying these type of towels um, with that particular brand name. So take a look um, there. That is definitely uh, a possibility. So when I want to make my own towel from the fabrics we're going to talk about in a minute here, um, I cut my, for the larger size, 22 inches wide by 30 inches long. The smaller size, which uh, all of those that I showed you from the, the Brother Past Projects, those were all done on Dunroven towels that I think we would really consider tea towels. And they have that nice hemstitched uh, finish on the, on the edge. And they were all um, smaller and they were 18 inches wide finished by 25 inches long. So when I want to make my own, and I'll show you the pieces in a second here, um, I cut it 20 inches wide by 27 inches long. Now, obviously, these are all just completely up to you, whatever size you like. But I think when you see a ready-made, um, you figure that it's popular and it's probably going to work. All right. So let's talk now about fabrics. Again, I think I might be using some fabrics that maybe aren't as uh, common to you or well-known or maybe thought of to use for uh, making towels. But Osnaberg is something that I've talked about for quite a while. And I have used Osnaberg fabric. And I'll show you the Osnaberg here. Go ahead and bring this up a little bit bigger. I use it so much, I buy it by the bolt. I'm going to bring it up really close to the camera. I have been making tea towels and kitchen towels out of Osnaberg for, um, believe it or not, probably this towel that I had in my sample stash is probably 25 years old, believe it or not, 20 to 25 years old. But it is just as beautiful as always, it's been washed a few times. It hasn't been used a lot, but it's been washed a few times. And this is just one of my all-time favorites for making towels. So when it comes to any of the fabrics that I'm using, I always pre-shrink the fabric. So great question. Um, Donna wants to know, do you pre-shrink your towels? I generally don't pre-shrink my, my towels. Um, they're relatively small. And I'm not really thinking that, you know, that they're going to shrink much. You certainly could if you want to. But when I make anything out of fabric, I absolutely positively pre-shrink it. Um, I want to get all that um, shrinkage out of there, all the sizing out of there. And then I want to be able to uh, cut it uh, oversized before I wash it. And then um, uh, cut it down to size when I actually cut it for the towel. So just a few tips on the Osnaberg. First of all, um, this particular piece, like I said, it's been around for a while. I have noticed that it's a just a teeny, teeny, weeny bit thicker than my new, my brand new bolt that I purchased. And it's also just a little bit darker. Again, hard to see on the camera, but you may find a variable in dye lot. Osnaberg is made by Rocklon Company. Rocklon is well known for making drapery lining and uh, lots and lots of home decor fabrics. They also make a very high quality muslin in a variety of different forms. And one of the things I love about the Osnaberg is that it, generally speaking, has a very nice selvage edge. So when I cut mine, I will cut it along the width of the fabric and I will cut it with the selvage as my top edge so that I can avoid having to hem that one edge. And then I'll hem the two sides and then I may or may not hem the, hem the bottom. I may just go ahead and add lace to the bottom like I did here. So I just used my serger to serge finish this and uh, 
top stitch that Clooney lace right on there. So Bambi Lynn is asking about where do you purchase it? Osnaberg would be found in the utility fabric section of your local big box store. And again, it's made by Rocklon. So uh, look for that name brand. I don't know anybody else that makes it. I, maybe they do, but I have never seen another, another name brand. And uh, Reen's asking, do I like the bleached or unbleached? I've actually only seen it in this particular color, Reen, which I would consider unbleached. I've never seen it um, lighter in the exact same fabric. But think about it. What is my criteria? So Julianne is asking, um, is Osnaberg different than muslin? Way different than muslin. Way, way, way different. Osnaberg really has a look and a feel almost like linen. And I see Rhonda actually shared a, um, a resource. I'm going to let you read that for a second while I sip a cup of, sip, cup, sip a sip of my cup of tea here. So good to know that. Um, I, my criteria for making the towel is, does it feel like a towel? That's kind of a no brainer, but does it feel like a towel that I would purchase? Does it um, uh, look like a towel that I would purchase? And is it absorbent? That is the main thing. So this, if I have wet hands and I rub them on this fabric, it dries like a, a, a kitchen towel would dry. So that means it's a, it's a yes for me. It's an absolute yes for me. So I'm going to bring this back up and I'm going to say, what other fabrics did I talk about? Waffle weave cotton, also known as honeycomb material. So first of all, you may have seen towels that look like a waffle weave. Again, this is a Dunroven towel. One of the nice things about the Dunroven house towels, let me get the, so you can see the, the label with the actual name. They almost always have this nice little um, hanging loop that's included. So uh, always make sure if you are decorating the towel that you decorate it on the opposite end or you're going to lose the ability to uh, use that. But if you looked at this, it's very bumpy, very textured, and I would call this a waffle weave towel. So it just goes, again, it's the criteria of what I'm going to show you next. Does it look like this? Does it feel like this? Yes, it does. But what it actually is, is something that we would probably consider spa robe fabric. And I call it waffle weave, also known as honeycomb. It's another fabric that you will find in the utility section of a big box, big box fabric store, very readily available. Everything I'm showing you for what I use to make my own towels is very readily available. If you can't find it, in your local store, you can order it from the big box um, online. But this is just wonderful once it's washed. Again, it very, very much mimics this waffle weave actual towel. And all I have to do is cut it to size, hem the edges. I went ahead and hemmed all four edges. I'll tell you, I'll give you a few more tips on that um, when I switch over to the. Um, to the table to show you. But you can see here what I've done is I have created an applique separate from the towel and then added it on as, uh, you know, just the applique piece. So that is my recommendation for waffle weave. Sharon is asking, does the waffle weave need a knockdown stitch? Absolutely. If you're going to embroider directly on this towel, I have not found any designs that are really suitable for either one of these as is, unless they were made specifically to be embroidered on a very heavily textured fabric. So my best recommendation for embroidering and adding embellishment um, on this type of towel would be to do some form of an applique. Um, there, you know, again, you may find some other ways to do it. 
You may have uh, applique function built into your machine so that you can create an applique. You may have software that allows you to do that. Um, but that that unless you're gonna you want to do that knockdown stitch, and most of the time you need software for that as well. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we do um, terry towels and textured towels, and I'll have a sample of this with a knockdown stitch on it. But just look at that. I mean, it just mimics perfectly what you would buy as a hand towel. Okay, Janelle is asking, what do you mean by utility section? Well, it, it, that's what it's called in, in, the, in, in the big box fabric store that I have. And I, I, I won't say the name only because I'm not, I don't want to advertise for them necessarily, but we all know what it is because it's the only one out there that spans across the whole country happens to have a name very similar to mine. <laughs> but if you went in there and if you got somebody that knew the store, I went in there and asked for muslin once and uh, the girl had to go ask somebody else what muslin was. Um, and let me get back, I'll get back to the muslin thing in a, in a minute here. But so they don't always know, but there is a, 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 at least in my store, a special smallish section that they call utility. And it's just some of the basic, basic fabrics and everything that I've shown so far, the Osnaberg and the Waffle Weave are in that utility section. It's just, it doesn't really fit with any of the other, you know, niches in the store where they've got, you know, knits or fancy fabrics or bridal fabrics. So they have a section that is called utility. Uh, very often that's where you'll find that uh, silver fabric that you would make an ironing board cover out of. So, you know, it's that kind of like that kind of stuff. Um, Lori wants to know what's a knockdown stitch. Lori um, and uh, Teresa likes the applique for the waffle. Thank you. I've got news coming up for you on that too. But Lori wants to know what is a knockdown stitch? A knockdown stitch is uh, a, a specific type of stitch that stitches across the fabric before you embroider on top of it. So it literally tamps down the nap or texture of your fabric. Uh, it just, it, it, it's a covering stitch. So very much like, like what we would consider underlay. If you've watched embroidery design stitch out, you'll see what we call underlay, where it's, it's tacking down an area um, to build up a little bit of thread before the actual pretty part of the design goes on. It's usually relatively open and relatively lightweight, but when those types of stitches are very close together, what they do is they completely the cover the fabric so that you're then embroidering uh, on top of that so that you're not um, subject to the plush uh, of the fabric poking through. Um, one of the things that is a little bit disconcerting a little bit for me uh, with a knockdown stitch is that it does tend to add bulk and weight and um, some thickness there. So, you know, again, I'll show you some more samples of that when we when I do the, uh, the texture one, but it, 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 it does completely change the look of what you're doing. Uh, it can also be used as a decorative effect where you tamp down everything around an area so that just the fabric pops up and that's used for, for terry cloth as well. Let's see. Um, <laughs> waffle waffle weave is how Kelly um, knows it to be too. So again, what made me even think of using this? Well, again, I found a towel. I knew these existed and looked similar. The other thing is if you've ever stayed at a hotel, uh, sometimes a little higher end ones, which is <laughs> rare, but I've, I've been in a few that were, um, you know, maybe a little notch up. And they have the robe that you can you can wear. I never do because I don't know who put it on before me, but that's just me. <laughs> but those are made out of this fabric. So they do make great robes. I made a robe for the It's So Easy TV show um, a few years ago uh, out of this fabric from Shannon Fabrics. So Shannon Fabrics also sells this type of, of waffle weave. I believe it's only in white or cream. You may also find that at your quilt shop. And it is a it's a higher quality than, than what you find in the utility section, but this stuff is decent. This has already been washed and dried and it came out looking good. If it comes out looking good after I wash and dry it, I'm good. And Kelly, let's see what Kelly said about knockdown. Um, yeah, 
uh, it's it's a great way. I'll, again, I'll have to show some samples when I do that, but um, it's a great way to have the the texture of the fabric itself pop out of the area that is not knocked down or covered up with um, with those stitches. Kelly did it on a bath mat. Very cool. And Rhonda says she embroiders um, those robes for a bed and breakfast. So Rhonda, you are the the embroidery digitizing expert. Um, I'm going to guess that your designs were specially digitized for that textured fabric. So I, like I said, you know, standard, ordinary, everyday designs don't very often work on this unless they were digitized for highly textured fabric. And that's where, you know, um, working in the commercial industry and having a digitizer create a design specific to the fabric makes a big, big difference because you don't want any of that, um, you know, to be iffy <laughs> at all. Um, Bobby wants to know, are any of these fabrics lint free? Um, I'm going to say not really. Um, I do have a lint free option for you that I will show you, but I haven't really found these uh, two that I've showed so far to be lint free and the third one um, as well. And Rhonda says, yes, correct. So, um, you know, that is very, very, very important. And Donna found hand-dyed Osnaberg. Oh, very good. If you didn't learn anything today, you probably learned a new word and maybe learned how to pronounce it because Osnaberg is um, one of those odd, odd, odd names that I have no idea where, where it came from. All right, ready for my next one? My next one is wild and crazy. But I think when you see the towel, you are going to say, really? And then you're going to want to try it yourself. Cotton drop cloth. All right. There's the words. We can take that off the screen. And now I can show you the real thing. This towel was entirely made from Harbor Freight drop cloth fabric. And this one was kind of a happy accident. Um, I was at a, a sewing retreat last year, and one of my friends, um, my good friend, uh, friends from Virginia, Don and Debbie, uh, happened to have a drop cloth from Harbor Freight, already brand new in a package, in their car when we were packing. And I said, hey, I've heard a lot of people are using those for embroidery. We're spending the whole, you know, weekend embroidering. Let's take it with us. We happened to have a washer and dryer where we were staying. So we washed and dried that fabric. Once it came out of the washer and dryer, I looked at it and I said, you know, that looks a lot like linen. And so once again, I, wet hands is going to be my test um, as far as does it, does it absorb anything? And it does. So it looks like a linen towel and it acts like a linen, or it happens to be cotton, but it acts like an absorbent towel when I have wet hands. And that told me it was a perfect criteria for making a towel. It is rather plain. It is rather ordinary. It, I will tell you that, um, and I'm, I'm sure some of you have already made things with it. Um, there, It's like you could do a, a, a whole afternoon search and projects that is done on drop cloths, but I've never seen anyone use it for towels. That may be a first, I'm, I doubt it. <laughs> but uh, when I again looked at that, I thought, hmm, that looks to me like it could be a towel. So we cut some out and we, like I said, after it was washed and dried, um, one of the things I recommended uh, was to make sure that it's cut perfectly on grain. So if you look at this close and I show you my my hemmed edge you're gonna see that um, you know it's not it's not wiggly it's very straight so what I did and again I it was already washed but then when I went to, to cut it I tore uh, an oversized piece and wanted to see if it came off on the straight grain and it did so you definitely want to have straight grain for both your length um, and and width as much as possible. Um, you could be a few threads off, but if you're if you cut it, one of those famous all-time words, cattywampus, um, when it's washed and dried, it's likely to 
skew a little bit and you want it to stay nice. Now, I have heard people say that they prefer other stores for the drop cloths. Um, I've only purchased mine at Harbor Freight. Uh, I understand Lowe's carries it. Home Depot carries it. You know, you may have other hardware stores by you. If you have a local hardware store, see what they have. You may find some some um, better, you know, some better options, but they're all pretty much the same. And again, think about it. Here we go again with a criteria. What is a drop cloth made to do? It's made to absorb um, spills. So it it does a good does a really good job of that. So again, and Teresa says her husband never turns down a, a trip to Harbor Freight. I know it's it's one of those fun places. I like I love hardware stores myself. Um, Cindy says uh, she did samples of her designs uh, for her husband's shop and did it on drop cloth. Yeah, it's very, very, very economical. And again, when it's washed and dried and ironed, it doesn't even require a lot of really tough ironing. It just it comes out really pretty. And because it's got some body, it holds up really well to designs that have a little bit more bulk and a little bit more density. This is a free design currently available on Dakota Collectibles. So again, I will link to this, but I don't know if any of you um, have used Dakota Collectible designs. Um, they have been around for a long, 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 long time in the commercial industry. Check with your local sewing machine shop to see if they carry those designs. And if they don't, you know, you can order online and you can pick a shop that you can associate yourself with. Um, I've associated myself with my local sewing store, which is Elko Sewing Center in Mentor. And so you can purchase, like I said, directly online or download free designs. So what did this towel need though? It needed a little bit of dressing up. So I'm gonna show you how I actually created that band, but it's just another idea for finishing the edge, trimming the edge and making it look like it's something special when it started out as something very, very ordinary. Okay, and Mary's asking, is there a certain weight on the drop cloth? Um, not that I know of. Uh, I've only seen, you know, like when you purchase the, the package there, uh, it just comes in one, uh, in one weight. It does come in different sizes though. So you may wanna see what is the most uh, economical. And Donna's done some Dakota collectible designs. They have a just a broad, broad range. So, so far we've seen fabrics, we've seen um, some ideas for designs, we've seen some ideas for trimming. Let's talk a little bit about hoops and I'll go over to my table in, in a minute here, but hoops uh, again is another thing that, you know, can be very broad depending on your particular brand. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to pop up a couple, couple questions here before they get away from me. Um, Julie wants to know what fabric is on the edge. Quilting cotton, Julie. Just plain old ordinary quilting cotton. I've got placemats in my kitchen that have this fabric in it on a strip pieced uh, placemat. And so I'm just looking for ways to pick up that color in a few more places in the kitchen. And Donna, you have a great, 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 great question here. Some towels... I bought wrinkled badly. Any tips? Yes. Um, iron them when they're still damp, if you can, or dampen them if they've, um, you know, if they're dry, and use some Mary Ellen's Best Press. Um, another option would be to use the Downy Wrinkle Releaser Spray. That works really well for getting wrinkles out as well. But I think the the main Thing that I have found is that if you dry the towels all the way through, uh, a lot of the ready-made towels. Now, you know, the fabrics that I'm showing you, they hold up pretty well to just about anything. So, you know, you don't want to kill it in the dryer, but, and you, if you definitely get a better result if you iron it while it's um, damp and use a little bit of uh, the best press. But uh, over drying it, once those wrinkles set in, they can be really hard to get out. So the, the more wrinkles you have in there, the wetter that needs to be in order to, um, you know, to get those wrinkles out. Lots of us like to make towels for gifts. So I would suggest, you know, all of these fabrics, again, are readily available and inexpensive. 
if you want to try making your own, it's very cost effective. Make some samples and then wash them and dry them. Make a few for yourself and see which ones you think would be the most likely to gift to those friends who don't like to iron <laughs> because there's a lot of people out there that don't even own irons these days. And I think most of us that sew, we don't mind touching up with an iron. And I think the, the Osnaberg, the, the waffle weave and that drop cloth fabric, all three of those um, work pretty good. And Julie says she loves the downy wrinkle release spray. It's it's great stuff. I've actually uh, written about it in my weekend newsletter a few times. And why, by the way, um, while I'm talking about weekend newsletter, I will um, just take a minute to uh, say, first of all, thank you everyone for watching live and on the replay. And if you enjoy the show, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications if you haven't already. And just remember that if you like this video by clicking that thumbs up, it tells other, it tells YouTube that other people might like it too. So you, it's a great way for you to be able to share with other sewing friends um, as well. So now that we've got that out of the way, um, Yes, I have written about that downy um, wrinkle releaser spray. So I always have Best Press in one bottle, and I have my downy wrinkle releaser in the other in the other bottle on my next to my ironing station. And when do I use one or the other? Well, when I really only want to get wrinkles out, I use the downy spray. When I want to add a nice extra finish to my fabric, maybe you know firm it up a little bit, crisp it up a little bit then I will use the Mary Ellen's Best Press, which if you haven't used Mary Ellen's Best Press by now, you don't know what you're missing and you need to find it. Um, you'll find that in lots and lots of places. Okay, L Faber, um, you purchased 100% cotton sheeting and test it, washed and dried it. Hmm, very good. If it works uh, like... Um, flower sack towels, that is great. You just never know until you try. So when I came up with these um, three different ones, um, it was just, you know, necessity was the mother of invention. I wanted to make towels because I was having trouble finding them. And I, my, my criteria was, like I said, it had to be, look like a towel. It had to be absorbent. And obviously we wanted it to be um, easy to care for as well. Kelly, that's a great question because I'm very perfume sensitive, like super perfume sensitive. Um, the downy has a, a light scent. I believe it comes in two forms and um, either one of them have a little bit of perfume, but not bad. I have not, um, I have the same issue you have and I have not been bothered by that um, at all. So I've been known to open a bottle in the aisle and sniff it <laughs> to see if it's going to, you know, lightly sniff it to see if it's going to be a problem for me. But it is, it, it really does, um, work really, really well. All right. So let's see. Um, the other one, um, just a couple more samples to show you, um, is like I said, the fingertip towel. Now, if you can find fingertip towels or any other Terry towel, and again, we're not really covering Terry today, but if you can find that, they tend to have a velour finish and the velour finish is not a high pile. It's very, very, low nap. The pile is on the, the other side of the towel. And you could embroider almost any design you want to on that type of fabric, as long as it doesn't have really fine uh, detail lines. Another option for decorating is to get some cording, uh, anything that's round. I usually zigzag in place. You can see my zigzag stitches with my pearls and piping foot. So that's just another, another tip for you. And then here's another towel. Another Dunroven towel. I got this at a local quilt shop. And if you were with us for the last tea and tutorials, Dawn from Creative Appliques had a great project that she did with a uh, pot holder. So it'd be great to make a matching pot holder to go with your with your new tea towels. This is a Dunroven towel, and I took um, the Creative Appliques pumpkin design and stitched it without applique fabric. So it's the same design um, Dawn used to create her applique, her uh, textured applique. And then I used Dawn's Floss Bella 
floss font to do the uh, happy fall. And I actually font mapped this in my BES software. So watch for a tutorial on that coming another, another day too. All right, let me see if I have any more questions. Let's see, let's see. I don't think so. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna show you just a, a couple more pictures. So we started talking about hoops before and when it comes to hoops, um, you have got lots of options. Um, maybe you have a, a brother magnetic hoop. Maybe you have a dime magnetic hoop. Uh, either one, they, they're a nice option. They do come in different forms. So let's just talk about the, the different forms that, that there are. There are ones that are a little bit higher and ones that are a little bit lower. So again, I'm not going to, I don't want to be too specific today with, with hoops. I'm going to show you a couple in, in a minute, but, you know, use what you have available. The uh, great benefit of a magnetic hoop is that you're not having to struggle with the screws on the screwy hoop and you're not having to get your fabric, um, you know, thicker fabrics in there. We're dealing with thinner fabrics today. So everything I'm talking about will work in a standard hoop. But I just wanted to touch on, on hoops and show you that there are a few options. So these two are both um, Luminaire. This one is for Luminaire, big hoop. Um, this one's for Luminaire, another big hoop. I like to use these types of hoop for thicker fabrics, just like my dime magnetic hoops. I like to use those for thicker fabrics. They even have some for the PR machines. I haven't explored all those yet. They've come out with so many new hoop, hoops that it's hard to um, keep track of all of them. But they are great, um, those types, especially for the thicker towels and the terry cloth. Now, there's a new kid on the block, and that is a flat magnetic hoop. And those, again, those are very similar to the dime hoops. And maybe you've got, you know, another, another brand as well. There are various options for this, but I do want to show you um, one of them just to um, give you a few clues as to how to use them. They are different than regular hoops because they don't come, generally speaking, with the markings on them or the ability to, to use a grid. So um, there are just a lot of different, different ways to use them. So there's a new, um, a new magnetic um, hoop, uh, 7 by 12 for all the machines you see listed there. So it will work even on the Dream Machine and, and the, um, the new, the Stellaire, um, the V machines. So some of those machines are past models, some are, are, are relatively new. And then there's a new one now for five by seven magnetic. And I actually stitched one of my towels with that. So I'll be showing you that in just a minute here. Um, if you have one of the machines that has the snap-on type. The previous one here is a slide-on, but if you have snap-on type, they have that same flat magnetic hoop available for many of those machines that use a snap-on. It is a four by seven, so it's a little bit um, uh, smaller than, than the five by seven, but it, it works good. And Julianne says she's got the new magnetic hoop. Um, great. That works really good. And um, Janice has the uh, has some magnetic hoops that are flat. Yeah, the flatter it is, the better it is for thinner fabrics. Um, Donna wants to know, um, does brother carry five by seven magnetic hoops? So you just saw the answer to that, but it also depends on your machine. Now, sticky hoops, yeah, that's another option, but I never use a sticky hoop for terry cloth, just like you're saying, Donna, because it can make it... Um, uh, ruin the towel when you pull it away. However, there is sticky available in um, wash away form. And if you use the wash away form, that is a great way to use um, sticky in your hoop and just wash it away. Everything has its pluses, minuses, its yes, maybe, maybe not. And a lot of that can be just a matter of what's available to you, but sometimes it's also the cost. So in particular with the wash away sticky, sticky, it's like, works like a sticky paper hoop, but it actually washes completely away in warm water. I love it. And it is great stuff. 
but it is on the higher end of the price scale. So if I can do it another way and I don't really need that, then I will do it another way. And um, Kathy wants to know an app for the snowman marker. Um, the app is specific to the machine. And so from my memory right now, it's just on the, uh, the Stellaire model, uh, sewing and embroidery combo, um, X, don't ask me to remember all the letters, but the, the um, X, XJ, XJ. <laughs> and then the, um, the embroidery only um, model as well. And then you can also use that app on the, on the Luminaire but you have a snowman marker also built in with the camera and the luminaire. So that gets a little bit, a little bit complicated. Um, some of those um, questions um, on all the various machines are a little bit better for asking where you purchased your machine from because they've got, um, yes, XJ. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> XJ. Uh, XJ and XE. XE is embroidery only. XJ is sewing and embroidery. So um, there are lots and lots and lots of options. There are third, par third party hoops, depending on your machine. It, it can get kind of um, kind of crazy. So let me see if I can get you switched over to my table and show you just a few things on the table there. All right, very good. So I'm going to move over. I won't be able to see your comments for just a few minutes here. So if you've got questions, save them for me. But I just wanted to give you a few more thoughts on the fabric itself. So first of all, let's talk about this lovely applique. Uh, if you are on my email list in a few days, you will get a, let me get this in the view here. You will get a link to the design um, with the whole applique process along with it. Step-by-step -step instructions. I created this design from a clip art. Uh, it's good. I'm not, I'm not the, the top end digitizer. So um, uh, just kind of think of it as kind of a little bit like a stencil look, um, but it is very pretty and very um, appropriate for you to add your own wording to it. Uh, you'll have all that area blank and it, it is ideal for fabrics like this that are puffy, nappy, textured, um, whether it's terry or this waffle weave, but just look how beautiful that comes out. Now, in order to do this, you're going to want to, let me get my raw fabric here. You're going to want to be careful when you cut out this kind of fabric that you follow a rib line. So if you look at this, I'm just going to come back and double check to make sure you can see me okay. Okay, let me know if you can't see. I think you could see that pretty good. If you notice, there are very um, evenly spaced honeycombs on here. And so you want to make sure that you don't cut across it. So don't, you know, this is one of the few times when I don't use my rotary cutter, I use my, um, my scissors and I cut right along one of those, what I would call uh, rib lines. Now the side, I'm going to do the same thing for the side. So you can see I've done the same thing there on the side right there. On the edge, what I did is I left my selvage in place. And I did that because my selvage was nice and flat. In garment sewing, we almost never leave a selvage in because it can very often cause pulling and puckering. But I noticed that that was laying perfectly flat. So I used that as part of my hem allowance. Once I've got all those edges cut, top, bottom, everything even, um, you may notice that you still may be a little bit skewed. And in order to counteract that, you simply pull on your fabric at a diagonal, just gently, and you kind of just get it back into place. What happens with these fabrics is when they're wrapped on the bolt, they're wrapped by a machine. And when that happens, it can distort the fabric. So once I did just a little bit of pulling, uh, it came out nice and flat. Pressing this fabric, you don't want to use very much pressure at all. You just want to, um, I'm, I'm answering a couple questions here so that I see popping in by you answering them for me. Thank you, Julie. Um, you don't want to mash this down. So just a very, very, very light press. And really once this is um, made into a towel, washed and dried, you're not gonna have any ironing to do whatsoever with this. 
So once we've got that nice and evenly trimmed, that's going to allow us then to do a double turned approximate half inch hem. So if you notice, when I turn this under, it automatically wants to lay flat right where, again, that, that rib line is. So that is why it's so important to cut that perfectly straight to begin with. And then you can just simply turn that, um, finger press it, and stitch it in place. So it might be a little bit wider than a, a half inch, but it's dictated by how that is going to fold and lay flat. Very, very, very easy. <clears throat> okay, the Osnaberg, that fabric. Again, this one is just a, a smaller, smaller piece. That fabric also needs to be cut on grain. So what I do uh, um, is I usually try tearing the fabric and see if I can tear it adequately. If I can't, then uh, what I'll do is I'll pull a thread and I'll just pull that thread across the whole piece. Just grab one. And once you've pulled that, of course, I've already done it you're gonna be straight on grain. And again, remember, if you're a few threads off, it's not a big deal, but take a look at that and you can see how nice and even and straight that is. And then I do what I look for the same thing um, when I'm cutting it on the edge and cut it on grain. So that's very important. Um, and Janice is asking, do I miter the corners on these towels? No, I didn't miter any corners. You certainly can if you want to but I'll show you my corners up close. I'll be real here. That one just is a um, folded over. I hemmed both short edges first and then hemmed the long edges. I did that on each one of these fabrics and I was perfectly, perfectly satisfied with that. Um, I didn't have any trouble stitching through it and I think it, it was nice and nice and neat. How many times have you bought one, put that in the camera view here, um, and you wanted to take it apart? Um, when you bought it because it was so unevenly done. So that settles that for both of these fabrics, the Osnaberg and the Waffle Weave. Make sure you're cut on grain. When I go to do the, uh, uh, I, I want to call this something other than drop cloth. It is cotton canvas. When I do the cotton canvas, I'm going to follow the same criteria. I'm either going to tear it or pull a thread so that I get a nice, um, clean, straight edge on both my, my width and my length. Now I want to pop back to the Osnaberg for a minute here. Uh, somewhere I thought I had one that I fringed, but let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? No, I don't see it, but you can see from this, this fabric fringes very, very, very easily. So if you want to create a fringed edge on the bottom of your towel, just simply pull those threads, pull them out. I would keep pulling them until I have uh, about an, an inch there that is raveled. I would do a zigzag stitch uh, just above it to keep it from raveling any further. And you've got a great look for that towel. I want to show you just a, a couple more options for towels, and then I'm going to go back to the, the drop cloth one and um, show you how I finished it. So again, this is a Dunroven tea towel. See the, the, with that hem stitched finish. This is the size that I used as my criteria for uh, small. And then I have another Dunroven towel. They come in a lot of these checks. I actually prefer the solids for embroidery, but this one is the one I used um, there, so you can see it. This one is the one I used for my criteria for my large towel. So I'll just lay them side by side, just so that you can see a little bit of the the difference in the in the width there. See that? And then here's the difference in the length. So the large is just a little bit, a little bit longer. It's just a um, a little bit more of a. Uh, you know, something you can work with, with that, with that size. Okay. So I want to go back to this one here with the drop cloth. And I think that just really made the whole thing with that. And how did I do that? Well, I started out and I hemmed my top edge. And again, if you have a nice selvage, feel free to cut it so that, that you use that selvage. But I hemmed um, 
three sides. So my top and my two sides, I left my bottom raw. So I haven't hemmed anything on this piece when I want to just walk you through this really quick. Once I have left that bottom edge unhemmed, I'm going to simply cut a strip of fabric. I cut my strip three inches wide. I turned under and pressed a half of an inch. I cut it a little bit wider than my um, actual width of my piece. You can see I've got a little bit, at least a half inch extending there. And I'm going to sew the right side of my cotton strip, just ordinary quilt cotton, to the wrong side of my towel using a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to turn it then and flip it to the right side, just like that. And then on the edges, I'm just going to simply fold that edge in. Remember, this side would already be hemmed. Fold that in and top stitch it in place. So I'll show you up close again how I did that. That just finishes just like that. So nice and neat and nifty. And it color coordinates with that design just beautifully. So options. We've talked about a lot of options. One other option for towels that I really like is flower sack towels. So flower sack towels come in a lot of varieties of quality. If you have a place that you know is good, um, go for it. I have had the good and the bad and the ugly with flower sack towels. So what I look for in a flower sack towel now is the uh, crinkled texture. Uh, if it's perfectly flat, I never buy them unless I'm going to use them for window washing or rags because they do make good lint-free towels or dry and dish it, dry and glassware and you don't care what they look like. But if you want something that's got a little bit nicer look, look for the ones that have a little bit of texture. I will uh, link to one of them um, that I do purchase at Amazon that is um, just like this and they they wrinkle less. They have a better uh, uh, kind of, you know, they don't come across like skewed and uneven. They're very, very nice quality. However, most of the time, flower sack towels are too big for my world. So what I do is I simply fold them in half lengthwise. I cut right down the middle of that fold, and then I hem that raw edge so that I now have two towels two tea towels made from one flower sack towel. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to the other camera and I'll hold that up for you so that you can see it. And then see if I've got any other questions. So I haven't embroidered on this one yet, but just look at that size. It's just the perfect size if you're doing the, you know, the half fold in on each side. Um, so let's say this was lengthwise on going to be hung over your uh, your towel rack and you fold it halfway in on both sides and then halfway down on the length you'd add a nice little embroidery design there and you've got a nice nice size for a tea towel so that's what I do with my flower sack towels um, hopefully that gives you some ideas yeah it is very hard Sybil you are totally right um, to, it's hard to tell the quality and flower sack towels when they're when they're packaged um, or when they're unwashed. You know, the proof is in the is in the washing and drying. And Lois says she loves uh, the Dunroven towels she's ordered to embroider. Yeah, they are they are really really great. And I highly encourage you, like I said, to check out your local quilt shops if you have a quilt shop in your area. Very often you will find uh, the Dunroven towels there. Um, and they, they may have a good a good selection for you. So let's catch up on a few questions. Uh, top stitch, uh, you know, Sharon, on that one, I didn't, I just rammed it through. <laughs> that was a last minute sample I made this morning. I wanted to finish that up. And uh, so I just used my regular foot. However, an edge stitching foot is ideal for stitching this type of edge. And normally, yes, I would have done that. I just um, lined it up with a spot on my foot and, and like I said, kind of rammed it through. So I guess I was, I was kind of lucky that it came out, came out looking that good. All right, Carrie, glad to have you here. We're just about ready to wrap it up. So I'm just going to look through and see if I've got any more questions. Thank you, Anne. Um, 
I'm glad I was able to give you some good good information. <laughs> Sharon, what did I do to make you snort laugh? <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? So I let me know in the chat. I'd love to know uh, when I was, if I've given you some, some ideas that you have never thought of before, or maybe stretched your imagination a little bit. Everything I present here, I do for you um, to hopefully make your sewing life better, happier, more enjoyable and more fun. So when you are ready to go sew, you are ready to have um, a good time in your sewing space. And it's really fun to be able to take plain things, blank things, make them beautiful. And especially when we're able to do it on a very uh, cost effective means. So I think you'll, you'll have fun with these. So feel free to um, give me your uh, comments either um, in the, you know, in the, uh, section where you can comment on YouTube. I love to read your comments or you can always email you, me. You can always get a hold of me at letsgoso.com. Let me bring that up again. Um, just www.letsgoso.com. And uh, if you're not on my newsletter yet, I would love for you to sign up because I'm always happy to um, send out things every weekend or maybe some special things. So watch for uh, all the links to be added to the show notes. I will even add a link for where you can pick up this free design. And I will also add, I will also um, email, if you're on my email list, the um, instructions and the link to download this design. And I will have it in multi-format. And yes, Nancy, I will, I'll let you know um, what I get on Amazon. Um, most of the things that I'm getting there, uh, uh, I, 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 I are, most of the things that I'm getting are from a local, a local, local shop. So Star Raymond, thank you. Glad you liked it. Glad you enjoyed it. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. I really appreciate it. I love having all of you here. It's just been really fun to visit with you on this um, plain old average ordinary laid back Saturday. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you soon. Until then, I wish you a world full of pretty stitches. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.